Many have accused Crawford of avoiding a fight with Ennis, but the reality is different. According to Blue Blood Sports TV, Crawford is not obliged to face Ennis, as he already has a mandatory rematch with Errol Spence. While there's talk about Crawford ducking Jaron Ennis, he's contractually bound to fulfill his rematch obligation against Errol Spence. What we know? I don't know nothing. I'm trying to find out what, what I know. Enlighten me. Is Terrence Crawford evading a showdown with Boots Ennis? The boxing world is abuzz with the latest drama surrounding two welterweight powerhouses, Jaron Boots Ennis and Terrence Bud Crawford. Tensions have escalated following Crawford's recent victory over Errol Spence Jr., setting the stage for a mandatory clash with Ennis. However, the eagerly anticipated match is cloaked in controversy, with debates raging over whether Crawford is deliberately avoiding Ennis or if contractual obligations are at play. The clamor for this fight has been persistent, given Jaron Boots Ennis's current status as the IBF interim welterweight title holder and Terence Crawford's position as the reigning welterweight champion. This alignment makes perfect sense, especially in the wake of Crawford's win over Errol Spence. Jaron Ennis's status as the mandatory contender has been officially confirmed, setting the stage for a high-stakes showdown. However, the road to this bout is riddled with complexities. Ennis has been outspoken about his frustrations, accusing Crawford of avoiding a match that could pose a significant challenge to his dominance in the division. Ennis's journey to securing the interim IBF welterweight champion title was characterized by a spectacular display of skill and power in Atlantic City. He demonstrated why he's regarded as one of the most promising talents in modern boxing, boasting an impressive record of 31 wins, including 28 knockout victories. Ennis's remarkable performance in the 10th round against Villa showcased his championship medal and established him as a serious threat to any opponent. Hopefully, we can secure matchups with these top fighters, like Bud Spencer, Keith Thurman, and Stonis. Ideally, it would be a one-sided fight with no need for a rematch, and then I can be next in line. The controversy surrounding Crawford's situation deepens, as reports suggest he is bound by a rematch clause with Spence, which some believe is being used to shield him from facing Ennis. The boxing community remains divided, with some defending Crawford's contractual obligations and others accusing him of avoiding the formidable challenger. In the midst of this, Ennis has made it clear that he's ready to take on other opponents if Crawford is unavailable due to the Spence rematch clause, as he expressed in a post-fight press conference. He also mentioned the possibility of squaring off against Imantus Stanonis if the bout with Crawford doesn't come to fruition, underscoring his eagerness to face top-level contenders. Crawford, for his part, has consistently asserted that he's not avoiding any opponent, including Ennis. He's emphasized that the narrative of his dodging challengers is exaggerated. Nevertheless, his steadfast focus on the Spence rematch has raised doubts about whether he will indeed take on the mandatory challenge presented by Ennis. Fans are eagerly awaiting a resolution to this ongoing drama, with many hoping for a Crawford vs. Ennis showdown. Such a bout promises to be an electrifying encounter between two of the division's finest, and Ennis's recent performances have only added to the excitement and anticipation surrounding it. While a Crawford vs. Ennis fight is undoubtedly a thrilling prospect for fans, Crawford finds himself in a quandary due to his impending rematch with Errol Spence. Blue Blood Sports TV, a prominent figure in the boxing community, has provided an insightful perspective on the unfolding drama in a recent video. The host delves into the situation, emphasizing that Crawford's reluctance to face Ennis is not rooted in evasion, but rather in his contractual obligation to honor the Spence rematch. The host also criticizes those who hastily accuse Crawford of ducking Ennis and highlights the inconsistency in the boxing community's reaction. According to Blue Blood Sports TV, the prevailing narrative suggesting that Crawford is avoiding Ennis is fundamentally flawed. The host contends that Crawford's mandatory IBF challenger is, in fact, Ennis, a position he assumed after defeating Spence. However, the rematch clause takes precedence, making it the dominant contractual obligation. The host expresses frustration with boxing fans who appear more interested in witnessing Crawford's defeat than in the sport itself implying that their support for Ennis might not be entirely sincere, but rather a means to an end. Blue Blood Sports TV also underscores the legal aspects of boxing contracts. 
with the host explaining that Crawford is bound by a contractual obligation to honor the rematch clause against Spence. This obligation is not a matter of choice, but a legal requirement that Crawford must adhere to. The host points out that fans who were previously eager to see the Crawford vs. Spence fight are now downplaying the significance of the rematch, revealing a bias against Crawford. It's worth noting that despite the noise surrounding Terence Crawford and Jaron Ennis, Crawford remains contractually obligated to fulfill his rematch against Errol Spence. Blue Blood Sports TV criticizes the fans for their shifting loyalties, accusing them of being more like detractors than true supporters of the sport. The host suggests that the fans' desire to see Crawford face Ennis is rooted in a deeper wish to witness Crawford's defeat, regardless of the opponent. According to the host, this sentiment reflects a broader issue within the boxing fan base, a lack of authentic support for the fighters and the sport as a whole. In response to these accusations, Crawford has asserted that the narrative of him avoiding Ennis has become repetitive and tiresome. Blue Blood Sports TV aligns with this perspective, clarifying that Crawford's statement refers to the repetitive nature of these accusations rather than dismissing the potential fight with Ennis. The host stresses that Crawford's statements are being manipulated to conform to a narrative favored by his critics. In addition to the Spence rematch hindering the possibility of a Crawford vs. Ennis match, Crawford has cited another significant reason for his lack of interest in facing Ennis. The undefeated, undisputed welterweight champion has assessed that fighting boots doesn't make efficient business sense to justify the recognized risk, particularly at this stage of his career. Crawford, who recently celebrated his 36th birthday in September, has essentially removed any room for speculation about facing Jaron Ennis after his immediate rematch with Errol Spence Jr. During an appearance on The Breakfast Club, Crawford candidly shared his perspective, saying, Listen, right now in my career, a lot of people are talking about boots this, boots that, boots everything. He continued, explaining why he sees facing Jaron Ennis as a lose-lose situation. If I win, they're going to say, well, he was young, he wasn't ready. You had the experience. You had so much more than this kid who's never been tested before. We've always seen him win impressively, and we say, he's talented, he's skillful, but he's never been in the ring with someone to truly test him. Crawford highlighted the age difference between himself and Philadelphia's Ennis, with Ennis being nearly a decade younger. Undoubtedly, Jaron Ennis is an elite-level talent, but it's worth noting that he hasn't faced an opponent who matches the completeness, experience, danger, and versatility of Terence Crawford, a three-weight world champion with an impressive record of 40 wins and 31 knockouts. Crawford currently holds the number one position on BoxingScene.com, quote S, latest pound-for-pound -pound list. Boxing legend Tim Bradley aligns with Crawford's perspective when it comes to Ennis facing Crawford. In an interview, Bradley expressed, Are you kidding me right now? I respect Ennis, I love his father, and his whole team is tight, but who has boots fought? You might be riding high with those knockouts against various opponents, but you've yet to step into the ring with a fighter of Crawford's caliber. He continued, And when you step into that ring, you get hit upside your head, and you realize you can't execute your usual tactics against the level of opponents you've faced at lower tiers. Bro, I'd hate to see him enter a bout with Crawford and appear average. Bradley didn't outright dismiss Boots, though. He acknowledged, If you go back and watch, he's a spectacular fighter. Boots is a spectacular fighter. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Boots. I think he's the future, but he needs to be tested. Bradley emphasized the importance of rigorous testing for Boots, suggesting that he needs to face legitimate opponents like Thurman, or, if Sean Porter were still in the scene, someone like him. Additionally, he mentioned the need to confront seasoned, hard-hitting veterans such as Danny Garcia, opponents who can match Boots both in terms of punching power and strategic thinking. According to Bradley, these are the kind of tests Boots should undergo before anyone can confidently claim that he's ready for a showdown with Terence Crawford. Boots tends to make several mistakes and displays a fair amount of inexperience, often rushing in attempting to secure a quick victory, but in the process, leaving himself vulnerable and exposed. These tendencies come with their set of risks. However, when you step into the ring against a fighter like Crawford, who possesses the knowledge of how to utilize his footwork effectively, maneuver strategically, and lure you in, that's when he'll set you up. He'll lay a trap, and when the opportunity arises, he'll capitalize and secure a knockout. 
In Bradley's view, Crawford squaring off against Boots Ennis doesn't align with logic. This doesn't just apply to the welterweight champion, but also to Boots Ennis, who is still relatively inexperienced, as per Bradley's evaluation. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned, and we will catch you in the next video.